He had three goals and six points the, the prior week, 20 shots on goal. He's leading the Ontario Hockey League with 230 shots on goal, which I believe is six or seven ahead of Sam Maye, who was shooting a lot for Peterborough, not as much now that he got traded to Ottawa. But uh, for Kevin He, I think that's been the message from the coaching staff is you have a shot, use it. And I think that he's being a little bit more you know strategic with it now. He's not just trying to go high glass every single time or, or sorry, going high and then having it roll around the glass, which we talked about the first half of the year, which was a big problem for this team of them just, you know, missing high and wide and, and not getting those rebounds or second opportunities for their line mates. So I think what you've seen from Kevin, he in the last, you know, little bit here, he's got goals in six of his last 10 and he, he's, he has heated up in the second half of the year, as you mentioned, a really, you know, tough start for him the first month or two in the goal category. But, you know, when you look at Kevin, he, and he's building to, to what scouts want, he's, gaining that feistiness that bite to his game he's not going to be the lady bing trophy like he might have been last year but uh you know if that was awarded in the league i think he would have got it because i don't think he i don't think he had many penalties last year but this year he's really you know being more aggressive he's hitting he's throwing his body around and he's becoming a more you know they always say 200 foot player but you can actually see that kevin is becoming that they put him out on the on the penalty kill and he's got you know he's he's lethal on, on the penalty kill as well so when you look at kevin he he's a guy that you look at going into next year when you said he does you know, get his name called in June that you expect another big jump from him from his second to his third year, because, you know, what we've seen in the second half is, is that he needs to continue to be a driver for this team. And Ben Boudreaux talks about that, needing that X factor player and Kevin, he shows spurts of it. And I think it's something that we need to see more of consistently. Robrick might get there as well, but they need those guys to step up as those top end dynamic players that you see around the league that put up the 80 to a hundred point. Uh, absolutely. And, and to put it into perspective, it's really been almost two seasons for Kevin. So we talked about it, about I just did it real quick um, to double check in the first 15 games of the season, he had six points and it was like, but he looked like it was like he trying to do everything one on four, like, you know, using his uh, unbelievable skating, and, and, and trying to just pick these crazy angles, um, which he ended up starting to just put in the net because um, he's got one of the most sneaky good shots in, in the league. And in his last 25 games, he's got 26 points. So it's, you know, a, a crazy difference for him. Um, and that was after that, you know, a lot of after they trade most of the, you know, the top end uh, players that that were, you know, over age, a little bit older when Sobolev and Rod and at the deadline. And uh, it's it's been really fun to watch. And you mentioned that he's a two way player. There's a lot of times that we do recaps where I'll bring up a play that he if, if it, even if he's not the one to lose the puck. He's able to get back. Like he's much like Asadorian. Like I've talked about them all. There's players that do not stop skating at any stage of of the of a rush or or a, a, a very annoying to play against. Best way to describe it. Very annoying to play against uh, because you know someone's trying to get it uh, on a rush or a two on one, and you'll see a lot of guys back checking where they'll they'll do their strides to try and catch up, and if they don't get it by the blue line, it's like all right, goalie, I hope you got it because then I can get to it afterwards. Kevin, someone that just legs are always moving, and uh, um, you know it's been really impressive on the defensive side of things. But as I alluded to, like he had six points for fifteen games, which and it looked like man, this uh, you know maybe the expectations of of him being drafted in his draft year and and him needing to lead the team after such a strong rookie season. Um, now it looks like all right, everything's starting to go in for him, and uh, that's huge. And we've talked about it as well since when, since Boudreaux took over as head co head coach, isn't afraid to hold him accountable. You know, mm -hmm. like we we've seen number of times where after back at the bench he's getting barked at for a bad play every once in a while very rare now but it, it's not like it, you know it's like it's i don't mean to bring up the leafs but like you know the core four is pretty much left alone in terms of criticism for the most part and you know the rest of the guys got to pick it up whereas Ke that, that's not the case where kevin's being held accountable um for any mistakes that he makes and those are few and far between now he's been so much fun to watch and much like i mentioned earlier on in the episode that like it gives fans something to watch like i can't wait for him to get drafted this year because it, it, you know, it, it's just going to be a, a really big lift for the team. The Ice Dogs, more than any other franchise in the OHL, need a player to get drafted in the NHL to start to rebuild the franchise. Because then at least you see other players that come in. Now there's at least a scout watching Kevin, regardless of the team that he goes to. You know, there that we've seen a couple times where I mean, Dubis was in was in the Meridian Center watching. Um, oh, name escapes me. Cooper Foster. Uh, Yes, exactly. So like that will happen throughout the year. And the more and more that happens, the other guys, you know, they realize it's possible. 
This is a team that last year had 33 points, which is unacceptable. This season, like I said, they've got 17 games to go and have already passed last season point total. So it's not like a lot of eyes are going to be on them because most of the league thinks that, you know, the last place, whatever. But that's not the case, though, because if Kevin was able to get drafted in those circumstances,